Okay, here's a very basic question. There are three cities, Adelaide, Brisbane, and Canberra. And I'll say there's basically just three ways one can drive from Adelaide to Brisbane, three major routes. And there are four major routes twixt Brisbane and Canberra. So three ways to get from Adelaide to Brisbane, four ways to get from Ad uh, Brisbane to Canberra. And my question is, is how many different routes are there from Adelaide to Canberra? Now let's assume we're basically going one direction while we're doing like backtracking. Now most people would automatically say the answer is three times four. There are 12 ways to get from Adelaide to Canberra. But I want to be very clear why we chose to multiply. For example, you might think three ways and four ways makes a total of seven ways. So what is it that makes, this, what makes multiplication appropriate for this problem? Well, one way to think about it is, okay, we have some choices. Going from Adelaide to Brisbane, we could go to, say, the top route, and then thereafter, there are four options thereafter. So there's four options after taking the top route. Or I could take the middle route and then follow that by any one of four options. So there's plus an additional four options if I take the middle route. Or if I take the bottom route, there'll be an additional four options after that. So the answer to the problem is really three groups of four, three groups of four, that really is multiplication, three times four. So yes, multiplication really was the correct choice here. In fact, if I add another city, say D, and can you, if you want to guess which country I'm in, D would have to be for Darwin, I guess. And suppose I told you there are two routes, essentially, from Canberra to Darwin. Then how many ways can I get from Adelaide to Darwin? Well, I guess multiplication would be appropriate. We know there's 12 ways to get here. And for each of those 12 ways, the additional two options, I have 12 groups of two. So it's three times four times two. That'll be, what's that, 24 ways to get from Adelaide to Canberra. Uh, to Darwin, excuse me. So that's it. That's basically the multiplication principle. And I can apply it in different situations. For example, I know you're only ever seeing me in a black shirt with black trousers. But it turns out I own seven shirts and ten different pairs of trousers. So my question is, how many different outfits could you see me in? Well, the answer would be, well, seven choices, ten choices. Now, for each shirt, there are ten options. Seven groups of ten, seven times ten. Seventy possible outfits. In fact, I've got different types of shoes. I've got red shoes with, uh, with blue laces right now. Suppose I have an additional, say, four types of shoes. Seven times ten times four. I might be wearing a hat or I might not be wearing a hat. Two times seven times ten times four, and so on. So that's the multiplication principle. If there are A ways to do one task and B ways to do a second task, then there's A times B ways to complete both tasks together, assuming, assuming that those choices don't interact with each other. For example, suppose I told you I would never wear my purple shirt with my pink trousers. Then I know my multiplication principle is going to break down. So, so assuming there's no interaction between the choices between the tasks, the way to complete, to complete two tasks is number of ways to complete the first task times the number of ways to complete the second task. So we make good use of the multiplication principle as we go on. So read the text below this video, practice this in a couple of other scenarios, and then we're all good to go.